up for it, find it, make it your own. It's the Get Thrifty Podcast. Welcome to the show. Welcome listeners. Welcome thrifters, pickers, antiquers, and DIYers from all over the country. You have discovered the Get Thrifty Podcast. Brought to you by ARC Thrift Stores right here in colorful Colorado. ARC Thrift Stores is a Colorado thrift store chain. And if you are in Colorado or visiting, please check out one of our 31 Front Range and Western Slope locations. You will not be disappointed. I am your host, Maggie Savick, and we are all about sharing everything that has to do with shopping secondhand. We've discovered that thrift customers are literally some of the most unique and gifted people out there, and we're going to talk to every last one of them. If you're a person who is part of our unique thrift culture, please contact us. We'd love to promote your businesses and your social channels and share your stories and advice with our listeners. You can find us on Instagram at Arc Thrift. Send us a DM and let's chat. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so excited about this one. Please welcome the show, Mindy. As a vintage dealer and collector, Mindy is always looking for the beauty in unexpected things. From chippy old window panes and vintage rhinestone jewelry to antique dolls, she believes in what speaks to the heart, awakens our memories, preserves the past, and celebrates nature. Awesome. She hunts, gathers, creates, and collects, and says that it's the details that make junk wonderful. Mindy resells most of her thrift items and finds at vintage markets, and she is currently in a shop in Loveland, Colorado. We're going to get all the details. She collects many things, including vintage Barbie and antique dolls. Vintage Halloween and Christmas are also top of her list for things that she's always on the hunt to find. So Mindy, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Hi, nice to be here. Thank you for having me. We are really excited. Um, First of all, you're in this vintage world of vintage marketplaces, which has a huge scene here in Colorado. But yeah. before we dive into all of that, let's start with your backstory. How did you discover thrifting? Well, um, I kind of grew up in rural Missouri, and there wasn't a lot of thrift stores back in the my early days as a teenager and things like that. So we would go to yard sales and church sales and things of that nature. The thrift stores, I think, were mostly in the bigger cities, but I lived in in a smaller rural town in Northeast Missouri. So we were, you know, thrifting at yard sales and (laughs) church sales and things of the such. Um, Once in a while on Sunday afternoons, my parents would drag us to um, antique stores. My mom was a big home decorator and loved antiques and antique dolls, which is where it comes from for me. But um, we would go to antique stores on Sunday afternoons and all the little towns. My mom always knew where the, where the good little antique stores were. And we would spend hours back in those days as a teenager, it was boring as heck to, <laughs> to have to go with my folks. Um, but as I got older and things kind of probably in my early twenties to, to mid to late twenties, I started crafting and really appreciating handmade items. And then that kind of led on into vintage collecting. I've always um, been a doll collector. Like I said, my mother was one. So we always had dolls growing up and it just kind of stuck with me. Not all my sisters collect dolls, but for me, it stuck. And (laughs) that's kind of led on to where I am today. Um, I was, after I got married and moved to Colorado, unbeknownst to me at the time when my husband and I were dating, my mother-in-law was a doll collector too. So it kind of just (laughs) enveloped me. And I just have been doll collecting for 30 plus years now. And everything, I started out with vintage Barbie dolls. And then I kind of moved into the um, antique dolls and on into vintage Christmas, Halloween, just all of that. I just love vintage. And I, I guess I just thank my parents for taking me to all those antique stores and church sales and all that kind of stuff growing up as a kid. And giving you this like love for something special like this. That's pretty cool. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. They, you know, like I said, when I was a kid, we were like, oh no, not again. But now I just like, it's, I thrive on thrifting. I loved going to the antique malls. I go on junk jaunts, um, been on several across the country. Wait, what is a um, junk jaunt? Educate us about that. <laughs> well, so, you know, it's like there's several across the country. Um, you can, it's like this, I don't know how to explain it really. It's just like all these people get 
together and the communities and they put their stuff out in their yards. Farmers will rent out their fields or their barns. And it's like people just dealers like myself or people just, you know, looking for junk to resell like a dealer. You just can go from spot to spot to town to town to field the field looking for treasure <laughs> junking treasure that is so cool <laughs> Who knew, I, right <laughs> i mean i've never heard of that expression before i just love it yeah. so it's kind of a yeah. community based effort then right and they they occur all over the country so you know it depends on where you go and and um, when they are there's in um, the 127 yard sale all across i mean it's like 500 miles north and south from alabama to like I may be getting this wrong, but like Wisconsin or Minnesota or something like that, or Michigan. And then like, there's the Nebraska junk jaunt, there's an Iowa junk jaunt, there's, there's different names for them, Spoon River Drive in Illinois. I mean, it's just, it's, they're, they're all over sometimes. And so that is so cool. And and take the minivan and we'll go. (laughs) Okay. So when you go, do you document that on your Instagram page? So if people are interested Um, in this. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes I'll take, I'm not, I'm not a huge video recorder at this point in time, but I'll take a lot of pictures and then I'll repost on my Instagram page yeah. and my Facebook page yeah. and kind of show some of the treasures I've picked up and what my customers can look forward to seeing when I get back to town and do vintage market or at the shop I'm located in here in Loveland. So that's kind of, I like, I, like I said, I'm just a novice at the, um, videotaping at this point so (laughs) and you haven't needed it so you know it's not broke why fix it so let's talk about your business and you know how you got started in it and what it's all about and how you kind of utilize thrift to collect your inventory okay well like I told you a little bit ago I started out being a crafter and sewing and doing all kinds of crafting items and selling them at local craft shows I had a good friend at the time that um well, we're still good friends now. Um, She was doing a local craft show and I would participate in that craft show. And one year I had been out yard sailing in the summer and picked up some really cute vintage items. And I decorate my home with those things, but I had kind of had an excess at that point. So I was like, I talked to her and I said, Hey, can I incorporate some of this vintage stuff with my handmade um, items? And she's like, sure let's go ahead and do it. And so at that um, holiday market that she did, I had, I did that. And then it kind of went from there. I kind of started mixing my handmade crafts with my vintage and then vintage kind of took over from there. Interesting. Interesting. (laughs) Okay. And so, yeah, I've been in um, over the past 20 and that was over 20 years ago. And so um, the past 20 years I've been uh, in small shops, in different locations, Longmont, Loveland. Um, I had my own shop for several years in downtown Loveland. Um, I've been in the antique malls up in Fort Collins along 287. I've been in several of those. Um, just a gamut of things. I'm currently, um, after I closed my shop in downtown Loveland, um, I went ahead and went into a new shop called Vera's House Beautiful. And that's where my hub is kind of where I, you'll always find my stuff um, outside of a vintage market if I'm doing one here in Northern Colorado. So oh, I, need to, I want people to go check that out for sure. So what is it called again? Vera's House Beautiful? Vera's House Beautiful. And it is in downtown Loveland. Um, and it's an old um, home that she renovated. And it's two stories and you can just wander throughout the entire home. Oh, There's cool. other vintage dealers in there beside myself and her. So it's just a really unique way to shop vintage for, you know, I, I adore the, the home. It's, it's an old home. I think it, I think it was built in 1895. Oh, wow. And love one is just such a classic area too. And people do go there there for those. It can be kind of a destination shopping place for vintage and that sort of thing. Right. Right. Us and uh, Fort Collins. Yeah. Kind of in between the two, there's, you know, the flea markets and the antique malls on 287 and then locally owned stores or shops. Okay. You're just a wealth of knowledge about Northern Colorado. Go back what you just said that there's um, antique malls, there's flea markets on 287. Uh, Highway 287 between Loveland and Fort Collins. There's probably five. 
Oh my gosh. Well, now, if you ever meet on me one side of the road, <laughs> if you ever meet me one there that you think needs to be on this podcast, please let me absolutely. know. Okay. Absolutely. I'm, I'm all about sharing this and, you know, making it be good content for other right. people who are doing this sort of thing. So let's talk about how you use thrift specifically. I love learning about the vintage side of these, these junk hauls and these junk jaunts. I can't wait to use that in a, a <laughs> sentence with someone today. <laughs> Uh, but tell us how you utilize thrift stores specifically. So I, you know, um, here in town, I, I don't live very far from my local one. Um, I have several actually within less than a mile of my home. So thrift stores. Kind of mm -hmm. Yeah, thrift stores. So that's kind of dangerous for me because um, I, I go all the time. Um, <laughs> I don't know. After I work full time, so I'm always you know, they're on my way home from work. So I'm always stopping in in the afternoon to see what's new. Um, what I have found with thrift stores is not only can you find vintage things, you know, and um, be whether it be furniture or just home decor items or items I actually collect like a vintage Barbie dolls or anti dogs, believe it or not, I found a few of those items at, at uh, thrift stores. So that's always a fun thing when I, when I get to find one of those, cause that just goes right into my own collection <laughs> uh, more than likely, but um, the home decor and stuff, I, you know, it's just amazes me sometimes all the variety that shows up at the thrift stores. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I don't know if it's after an estate sale, someone drops off their, the leftovers or, you know, some families just don't really want to deal with an estate sale or anything like that. So they just take it and donate oh, it directly yeah. to the thrift. Um, things like, you know, you just never know what's going to um, show up. And I, you know, when I peruse the aisles, I, I'm always looking for home decor and I have certain looks that I'm looking for. Um, and my shopping cart is usually pretty full. You know, when I check out, I mean, I know they know me here at my local. One. <laughs> of course, of course, you shop. What else? What else do you shop in Loveland? Are there other thrift stores besides Ark? Uh, well, there's Ark, and there's um, Habitat for Humanity, oh, yeah. and there's Goodwill, and so those are my primary three that I go to um, here in Loveland. Uh -huh. um, you know, up in Fort Collins, I think there's a few more, um, and I can't remember their names. I just know how to get there. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. That makes sense. Now the car knows, I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as silly as that sounds. Um, so true, but yeah, though. there's several down in Longmont I, I visit. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, off and on and mm -hmm. kind of just peruse um, the, the northern Colorado range. I um, sometimes on Saturdays, I do a big loop. I, you know, start in Loveland and I head to Longmont and on down around to North Denver and things like that. And kind of just make a big loop up back and around through Greeley and then head back across 34. So, um, yeah, that's what I do. And, and I just, like I said, I'm just astonished sometimes with some of the stuff I find. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is going to look so perfect with, with what I'm going to do in my next setup at, at, the locate at Vera's where I'm at or at my next market. I always am formulating how I'm going to use items. And I just see potential in so many things, whether it's a candlestick or a pillow or a set of dishes, or even a larger piece of furniture, you know, I just like my brain just goes, Oh, this is going to be so cute if I set this up like this. And so, like I said, it's not always, <laughs> I mean, my trips are often and they're not always what my husband likes to see when I come home with a van. <laughs> You're not the first guest to tell us that. <laughs> it's like, how quick can I get some of it in the house and hidden? And then what's large enough that I have to have him help me with. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk to us but, about some of these vintage markets. Are these markets that move around or pop up at certain times of year? Educate yeah. us about that. Well, there's, there's several different promoters throughout Northern Colorado and Denver. And of course, um, some of them even branch down into Southern Colorado, uh, Colorado Springs and that kind of thing. Um, they're usually, uh, they're usually more, at least the ones I participate in are usually around seasons or the holidays. So like maybe a spring market or a summer market or, a. uh, 
a fall market or even a holiday market. Um, you know, that's usually when people are looking to switch up their homes and things like that, if they're going to be decorating for any of those seasons or those holidays. So, you know, keeping them kind of around those, those um, arenas of, of decorating themes and things like that. I think the promoters try to will get more attendance that way, if that makes sense, because people are, are excited to decorate for fall after the hot summer. They're ready oh, yeah. to do yeah. the Christmas stuff. They're ready, you know, they, you know, so I think most of them for the most part are all around the, the seasons or the holidays. That's so interesting. Cause even, you know, as a retailer myself, we are so conscious of seasons, you know, even in our stores, I, People Absolutely. don't, they don't want to shop Halloween in January. They want to shop it in August and September and October. So we have to be really conscious of that before right. we go any further, because I do want to go back to, a, a, you know, kind of your aesthetic, which I find so interesting. Tell us your Instagram handle, how people can kind of listen and check out your Instagram page at the same time. It's at junk. Wonderful. That is my, my Perfect. Um, business name. So you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Jack Wonderful. That's awesome. And one of the things I've noticed, you know, just with, pop, you know, I definitely do a lot of pop culture and follow it mm -hmm. relatively religiously. And you really have this very, you know, farmhouse neutral color aesthetic going on your Instagram page, which is super <laughs> modern, you know, I, have you always been into that was, I mean, or do you no. follow friends? I do try to follow some trends, but, um, you know, I, depending on the season, again, depending on the holiday, I will switch it up at Christmas time. You'll see more reds and greens mm -hmm. at Halloween. You'll see more of the oranges, the pumpkins, the fall, um, tones that really bring that comfy, cozy feeling, um, to the fall scene after such a hot summer, everybody's ready to put on flannels and <laughs> get out their candles and their pumpkins and things like that. So I kind of, um, yes, generally speaking, I am of a neutral tone and I, I mix, you know, so when I'm out thrifting, I am always looking for neutrals and, um, soft, cozy type, um, items that yeah. will mix into any decor. So if someone has a home that's built around reds or they love the color red, I will try to pick items that will, will they can incorporate with that but it give a little bit different look uh -huh. um but yes my theme is usually neutrals i am definitely a um ruffles and lace and shabby kind of chippy thing going on i will pick up um on trend things like colors that are on trend green's a huge color right now uh -huh. black um, you know, plants are in right now. The boho um, gypsy theme kind of is in right now. So those items I will pick up as well and kind of incorporate them here and there. I try to really stay true to my look and my style uh -huh. because I think that's what makes me authentic. And sometimes, and I've heard from, you know, and read so many places that you really need to stay true to who you are because when you try to go out there and do so many other things, people don't, I mean, they might not identify you, identify with you as, as much. So when you have your certain look or your theme or your things that you uh, specifically go for, they tend to identify with you. I mean, my customers know when I do a market, I'm pretty sure they know which booth is junk wonderful. Mm -hmm. They can tell right off the bat usually. And, and all the dealers really have their own look, their own style that they do. So, you know, the next door neighbor to me knows what people will know her for or him from that look. They know, I mean, they learn quick and they know what they're looking for. So uh -huh. I just try to stay true to who I am and what I can, um, help a customer find well it really comes through on your instagram page so i definitely Thank encourage <laughs> listeners i mean it's just beautiful you know and it really is you you really have curated something special there do you also sell on instagram if someone sees something can they buy from you on instagram um, they can they can direct message me i don't always sell on uh i don't have like a shop on instagram or anything but if local local customers want to 
DM me and ask me if it's, you know, if it's available, I can definitely respond and let them know. Most of the items I post are either at Vera's or um, I'm taking it to a, the next market. So they'll, it'll always be available at those places. But if they're specific to something, they can always uh, direct message me. Great excuse to take a trip to Loveland, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Great finds and you can meet Mindy in person. Let's dive into a little bit of the, the, the upcycling that you do mm -hmm. and how that kind of turned into something special for you? So back, back in my, um, probably 10 years ago, I used to do a lot of the um, painting furniture and things like that. Um, I'd find a piece at the thrift store or at a yard sale or whatever, and I'd paint it and distress it. Um, I'm not a very good painter. I'm not very patient. <laughs> to let things dry before you have to add another coat and things like that. So I quickly found out that painting wasn't good for me or right for me. So sometimes I just go ahead and if I have to pay a little bit more for a piece that's already done and I don't have to touch it, um, I will do so because um, that part of upcycling wasn't my cup of tea. Um, now, on the other hand, if it's a smaller piece, if it's a candlestick or a, a garden pot or a picture frame or something like that, I will go ahead and do the smaller items. I'll, I'll paint them and distress them and get them looking different than what I picked them up at. And that's, that's the beauty of some of this is seeing the vision and something that is just run of the mill or someone donated it because they didn't, have, they didn't want it anymore. You take it and you upcycle it, you paint it, you add some bling, maybe I'm, I'm pretty good at adding bling <laughs> to sure. some of my things. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of where I do my upcycling. Sometimes I don't even upcycle a piece. Sometimes if the trend, if it's on trend and, um, or I can make it fit into a certain vignette that's um, got on more on trend items, I will do it. And sometimes it's just the simplicity of an item that makes it desirable or pretty or whatever. And so I don't always upcycle everything. Some of it just hits the floor as is. I'll clean it and do all that. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. And then, but yeah, sometimes I'm, I'm, I tend to do that more these days than, than painting like I used to. Uh -huh. And I'll take like silly items like old bottles and doll parts. And I still like to do that kind of, um, I wouldn't really call what I do steampunk, but just mixing those mixed medias together, I'll put an old doll head on an old liquor bottle and then oh, cool. maybe put some buttons and some bling on it and things like that. So I upcycle kind of in the smaller zone of that anymore. I love that because it really then becomes an art piece that's one of a kind, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's how I look at it. It may be a little odd to some people to see a doll head on a... <laughs> Liquor, oh, I bottle, love that. liquor bottle but for me it's it's creativity and that's also part of my my love of this as I get to create mm -hmm. I have to tell you about this thing in my office I'm a huge doll head person too for some reason it has to do with my grandmother she always had doll heads laying around because she was making her own dolls and I right. bought this bag of tiny doll heads and they look like little just little doll heads and I put them on a Christmas wreath and, you know, it's still on, I, now I just keep it year round at my office because it's such a conversation piece. So right. I, I respect yeah. the doll head game. And the art in it, it is art and, you know, art is subjective and we just do what, what makes us happy. And that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And so, and I love in your bio, you you were talking about, you know, harnessing these memories from the past and, you know, right. really cherishing those. So I think that's super special. Right. Um, right. On this podcast, we've kind of gone into the differences between, you know, thrifting, vintage, and, you know, those kinds of different things. Can you educate our listeners about the difference in like antiquing versus thrifting? Well, I think that's, that can be, mean different things to different people. For me, thrifting is like being able to go to a thrift store or a yard sale, or maybe even a state sale to look for items that I can get at more reasonable prices, right? Mm -hmm. So when I resell, um, I have a little bit better margin, if that makes sense mm -hmm. for my business. Mm -hmm. um, when, so that's, to me, that's what thrifting and yard selling and that kind of, and junking to an extent is. Um, 
when I go to an antique mall or when I go to an antique store, it's usually with the intent of finding that, that one unique piece or several unique pieces that someone else has already curated. So they're gonna have their retail price on it, right? And I realize that when I go to an antique store, I'm probably gonna be paying a little if it's more. Something sure. really unique and really special, I'm gonna be paying a little bit more for that item. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, it totally does. And I think it's important that, you know, we learn from all of our guests about these differences and you have an interesting story. And I, and I guess that leads into my next question. You've seen thrifting, antiquing, vintage finds change over the last 20 years. Uh, talk about that. Some of the things you've seen change and this new surge of thrifting amongst young people, your thoughts. Right. And that's it. Thrifting, I think, is it's, it's all new trend in itself. I mean, it really is. Um, I, you know, for me growing up, it was yard sales and all that into my adult years of appreciating antiques and going to the antique stores more or antique malls or whatever, or estate sales or auctions. Um, but thrifting for me, it's the thrill of the hunt. I mean, when I go to an antique store, I pretty much know what I'm looking for or at least a specific idea. But let me tell you, when I go to the thrift stores, I, I, it, you just don't know what you're going to get. It's like that box of chocolates, according to Forrest Gump, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. You just don't know what you're going to get because you, I mean, I just peruse the aisles. And I go, when I go, I go one way and then I turn around and come back the other way. Cause you never know what your eyes didn't see the first, right. The first time through. So for me, I think it's the thrill of the hunt at the thrift stores that really makes it, you know, on trend for me or where my, where it helps my vintage business, because I just don't know from store to store, from aisle to aisle in each store, what I'm going to find. Absolutely. You just never know. That really is the fun part you about it, right? You don't, you don't know what you're going to find when. So that's the, that's the thrill for me. Well, what would you say to people? I, you know, I feel like we have some listeners who kind of dabble. They'd like to do more. What, what's your advice to people that may be a little nervous to really dive into thrifting? Oh, just go for it. I mean, what's, what's, there's no harm in it. You just head into the thrift store and, and, you know, it, I guess for me, I have, like we talked about, I have a certain look, I have a certain style that I thrift for. Um, so I guess my best thing is if you know what you like, like if you're into mid-century modern, you know, go in with the attitude of looking for items that appeal to you. And that if you don't sell it, you can incorporate it into your own home decor because, well, that's, that's, what you, because that's what you love, right? And that's how you decorate or things like that. So I think that's probably my bit of advice is go in with a look or a style in a mind of what you love and then go from there because you'll find it. I know you will. Eventually, right? <laughs> if you go yeah. enough, it shows up. Well, that's the perfect lead into the next question then. What do you want to put out there into the thrift universe, that unicorn item, something special you might be looking for, some item that just you want to put out into the ARC universe? Who knows when oh, you say a, it out loud, <laughs> maybe it'll a, appear. <laughs> mm, that's a hard one for me because I like so many things. That's really hard. Um <laughs> Because <laughs> I like so many things. And for me, it's not always, um, I suppose if I had to pick something, it would be this gorgeous cupboard, vintage farmhouse cupboard with lots of cubbies that <laughs> I can fill with little things. That's um, one of my favorite things is, is the old cubbies from barns or from old workshops or things mm -hmm. like that, um, tool tool caddy like things where they put tools in so I guess if I had to put something out there it'd be this wonderful cubby that I just stumbled upon that was like yes take me home <laughs> yes let's let's put it out there and hope that it comes back I mean yeah I'm just so excited that you're out there doing the good work spreading the good word of thrifting and you know bringing people into this this vintage world especially in Loveland and northern Colorado it, blows my mind. Tell guests again where they can find you. It's um, on Instagram and on Facebook at, at junk. Wonderful. 
perfect. All one word. Yep. Junk wonderful. Highly recommend you take a trip to Loveland and check out Mindy. She is doing really amazing things out there. And as we end all podcasts, I have to ask, and she's been in the news again, right? Our girl won Miss Dolly Parton. We always give a shout out to her at the end of this (laughs) podcast. Uh, Mindy, what would you like to share about Dolly Parton? Anything you'd like to talk about or or a story or anything? I, Dolly is Dolly. She's wonderful. I mean, (laughs) I mean, she's been an icon through all the ages. It doesn't matter when, you know, the 60s, 70s, all the way up to now, icon all the way. And she has really good advice. Ooh, I love that. (laughs) I mean, if you read some of her quotes, people are putting her quotes out on Instagram. They're, you know, she's just an icon. Should all be like her. (laughs) Couldn't have said it better myself, Mindy. You are a complete delight. Please go up to Loveland. Check out Vera's Vera's House Beautiful. Am I saying that correctly? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Vera's House Beautiful. You can find Mindy there. You are amazing. I'm so grateful that you. you joined us today. Oh, that's so kind. Thank you. (laughs) And please keep in touch. We want to come up and visit you. My uh, producer actually lives up there. So I'll have to send Lisa and Bailey up to to come check you out and and see. Oh, and the president of our ad agency lives down the street. I'll send her as well. So Vera's Vera's is open on Friday and Saturday. So always make sure you're on a Friday or Saturday. Good note. Okay. Maybe I would hate for you to make a trip up on another day and she not be open. So absolutely. Okay. Well, Mindy, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Listeners. Thanks so much for joining in today. And a reminder, as always, please subscribe and leave us a five-star review about how funny, creative, and smart we are. And if you're part of this unique culture and you'd like to join this podcast, please send me an email, Maggie at arcthrift.com, or you can reach out on Instagram at arcthrift and now on TikTok at Arc Thrift Stores. Have a wonderful week. It's the Get Thrifty Podcast. This podcast was powered by Arc Thrift Stores and edited by Avocet Communications.